Hey, everybody, welcome back to Linux for Everyone and welcome home. So the highlight of my week has definitely been my conversation with Canonical's Alan Pope. I asked Alan some pretty difficult questions, and he did not shy away from any of those. If you want to listen to the entire 75-minute interview, you'll see a link to that on the top of your screen. But today, I wanted to highlight two things that, that really fascinated me that came out of that conversation with him. And it's anchored by a group at Canonical called the OEM Enablement Team. And I think you're going to be really, really surprised by what they're doing. Before we jump into that, I wanted to take a moment to express my thanks to DigitalOcean for sponsoring this video. DigitalOcean offers the simplest, most developer-friendly cloud platform. It's optimized to make managing and scaling apps easy with an intuitive API, multiple storage options, integrated firewalls, load balancers, and much more. You can get all of this, plus access to their awesome customer support for as low as $5 per month. And we at the Destination Linux Network have partnered with DigitalOcean to offer you two months free and a $100 credit. All you have to do is go to do.co slash DLN. Again, you can get started on DigitalOcean with that $100 credit by going to do.co slash DLN. So what do you think is the most misunderstood thing about Canonical? I think it's partly, I think people misunderstand our motives. I think they think we're doing things to subvert the Linux community. Like we're trying to be, in inverted commas, the next Apple or the next Microsoft. I think one thing that people don't appreciate is that there are people behind those packages and there are people behind those emails and there are people behind those blog posts. And we've all worked in free software for a long time and we're not indoctrinated into some kind of cult of Ubuntu. It's just that we think Ubuntu does it really well. And if there are things that are wrong with it, we want to fix it just as much as you do. And just like every open source project, there are many more bugs than there are human beings possible to fix all those bugs. Hmm. Um, but we try and we try and prioritize them. We try and get stuff fixed that is important, that we think is important to users and our customers and our partners. Um, but um, like, and there, there's stuff that happens behind the scenes that people don't even know about like we have deals with oems to ship ubuntu on those devices and that means we often do hardware enablement and so there are upcoming laptops with new audio hardware and the work that happens in uh the firmware the kernel blue z pulse and alsa all needs to be coordinated in order to get that hardware working on that laptop. And there's teams of engineers who work on getting that hardware working. So when you go and buy a laptop and you stick an Ubuntu CD in or you stick an Arch CD in or whatever CD you want, the fact that that works is sometimes because somewhere in Taipei, there are engineers working for Canonical who make that work. There's an office in Taipei where they have piles and piles of laptops before they're ever released to the public uh, prototype laptops from all the tier one vendors and we do our best to like ensure that the hardware works on on ubuntu on all of them and sometimes now, you're that not means you're not creating... talking about you're not talking about oems you have deals with are you you're just are you, well, are you we just have talking deals... about windows laptops we're, we're... or well they don't have any os on them when we when we get them and they're not they're not even out in the shops yet we get them before they're released but they're not intended um, to be sold with Ubuntu. They might be. They might be. But you're Some you're are. ensuring that Ubuntu works on them regardless is what you're saying. Yes. Nice. Yes. Nice. Okay. So they ship us laptops. Uh, we do whatever engineering is required. And one of the features in 2004, if it's determined that you need a funky kernel that's slightly tweaked for that particular hardware, <gasps> then the installer detects that and says, hey... I've detected that this machine is supported by this specific kernel that we made. Tick this box and it will go and get that kernel and load that one on. The goal is that in the future, you know, you could buy a machine that you know is supported and we under the covers put the right kernel on there to support all the hardware, the funky the funky hardware that's inside that that laptop. What's your favorite Ubuntu release of all time? Not the most performant or modern, but just the one you were most excited about. Oh, man. 
<laughs> that might be the toughest question. Yeah, it is. It totally is. Like, obviously, marketing and PR answer is the latest release. Is obviously the best one. Yeah, yeah, yeah 2004 yeah. is the best one. Everyone should use that. Probably 1404. Uh, Before my it, time. It had, it had unity that had matured enough that it was robust, stable, performant. There are still people running 1404 now, like nearly six years after it came out, there are people still running 1404. In fact, and they have another fun four st- years, don't they? Is that how? Uh, yes, yeah, 10 years for it, ESM. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And th- did you know, this is a thing that I don't think many people know. Uh, if you're running an ESM supported release of Ubuntu, like 1404, I'm not using this as a segue to an advert, but if you're running <laughs> uh, 1404, you can have ESM extended support for free for up to three machines. And if you're an Ubuntu contributor, you can have it for free for up to 50 machines. 50, five zero. Five zero, yeah. Five zero. You, yeah, and you'll get those extended extended support lifecycle for the additional five years if you're an Ubuntu contributor. Thanks a ton for watching, everybody. And listen, if you have questions about what you've seen in this video, leave a comment, ask them. I'll make sure that Alan sees them and uh, hopefully we can get an answer for you. And hey, if you're new to the channel, I would love to have you subscribe. I'm doing a lot here from gaming and opinions and news and uh, just whatever excites me. And I hope that it excites you. I'll see you in the next video. And until then, take care and take care of each other. See ya. That's the only reason why I took the job is so I don't have to shave anymore. <laughs> well, the bottom half of me is pajamas, so. <laughs> oh, you wear clothes <laughs> on your bottom half. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> I saw um, a, uh, there's a journalist I follow in the UK called Kate Bevan, and she was, uh, a lot of people were tweeting out their tips for remote working because, uh-huh. you know, a lot of people are suddenly having to remote work. Yeah. And uh, a lot of people who do this on a regular basis are giving their sagely advice. And hers was, have nighttime pajamas and daytime pajamas and make sure you get out of your nighttime pajamas into your daytime pajamas when you're working. <laughs> because that'll make you feel more professional, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. It'll make you realize you're actually at work. You're not, oh, you're not I love in bed it. anymore. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> it didn't actually make sense when I when I read it. I was like, "Yeah, that's." And then I thought, "No, no. <laughs>